I'm Piers Corbyn from weatheraction.com and we're going to tell you about our solar lunar amplification magnetic process, uh, the findings of which we first announced in New York on March the 10th this year, 2009. Uh, what this is about is a new understanding of how the moon modulates the rush of particles that come from the sun. So very symbolically, the sun on my right, 93 million miles away, and the earth and these magnetic connections change with the magnetic cycle of the sun. And that affects how the sun affects the earth, in particular the earth's magnetic field. But also the moon is orbiting around the earth and that also interrupts the solar wind. And there are very important connections between the phase of the moon's orbit, the plane of the moon's orbit as it goes around, and the magnetic phase of the sun's cycle, the sun's 22-year magnetic cycle. And what we find is that in a certain phase of the moon's rotation of its plane of orbit around the sun and the magnetic cycle of the sun we get better connections and you get warming and generally speaking this warming happens uh, in a lunar period defined by having uh, sol solar eclipses um, around the uh, early part of December and uh, uh, the sun being in its odd cycle just after its maximum. And at those times, when those coincidences are closest, we get the highest temperatures. So here, solar cycle 13, the 23, a big one. Solar cycle 17, a big one. Solar cycle 11, a big one. And the spacing between those is about 60 years. And there are sub-cycles as well, where the connections are not so good and they are weaker peaks. The average period of this general cycle, the overwhelming envelope cycle, is about 60 years. And that is, the, that is also the driver of what's called the Pacific Decadal Oscillation. The temperature of the Pacific Ocean, the circulation of the Pacific Ocean, goes in an overall variation of 60 years, which is why the temperature of the USA, the biggest cyclical change in temperatures in the USA, is 60 years. So understanding the basic parameters which describe this cycle is the SLAM process. And of course this leads us to our ability to make long-range climate forecasts. Namely this super peak of a number of things is a super peak, which means we're going to have a general decline in overall temperatures, a bit like this in reverse for the next century or so, which is why we are predicting world cooling. Although we're also coupling that with the need to understand what the sun itself is going to do in that uh, in the next hundred years, which of course is why we work with uh, astrophysicists dealing directly with the sun as well. The SLAM is a big advance for weather action. Uh, and we will be publishing details of it uh, in the near future and we will discuss it further at our special conference on October the 28th this year. If you need further information, please visit our website weatheraction.com or email me peers at weatheraction.com. Thank you.